Just in time for Fontaine, it is time to complete the collection of tier list. We've done five star characters, five star weapons, four star characters, and it's now time for four star weapons. Some of these weapons are legit. Some of the best weapons in the game, better than a lot of five stars, and all the challenges I do, four star characters only, four star weapons only, wouldn't be possible without some of these godlike four star weapons, whether you're free to play or a long time player, I got the information you need. Let's go, homies. This is gonna be a long ass list, so let's get started. As you can see, guys, there are a ton of four star weapons. I'm gonna be going through them very efficiently, I promise. Let's go over the tiers. SS, game changers. These are the best weapons in the whole game. Don't let it fool you that they're four stars. Really, really, really good weapons. S, these are fantastic. Also, super good. They're just a tier below. Don't get hung up on that. They just might not be as broken as the top tier. A, solid weapons, not bad. They may be the best you have right now, and that's great, but you could, you know, strive to get a better weapon from one of the higher tiers eventually. B, mid and niche, not really the best. Maybe once again, if it's the best thing you have for a certain character, run it, but I can almost guarantee there's probably gonna be a better weapon. And then D, the bell. Let's get into the list. We are gonna start with bows first. And I saved Fav, all the Black Cliffs, all the Royals, groups like that. They're gonna be at the end. They're gonna be a little bit separate. We've got King Squire. This is a charge attack weapon, but it's not the best charge attack four star. There are ones that are better, which we will get to. It's all right. It's pretty much made for like Melt on you or Tainari if you don't have something better. It's gonna start out in the niche tier. Rust. Rust is really, really, really good for the characters that use it, which are pretty much just Yoimiya and Child. This weapon is extremely good. At R5, it legitimately rivals Miss Splitter as Yoimiya's best weapon. Hope you guys get an R5 if you guys love those characters. Next up, guys, Sacrificial Bow. Great weapon, especially on characters like Diona, like Kale. Okay, it's just gonna give them more energy, more skill, more application. Dude, great weapon. It doesn't work on every single bow support, but on a lot of them, it does. it is very good. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go fantastic. Up next, this is the best Pretty much blanket DPS four star stringless for elemental reaction. So I'm talking Venti, I'm talking Fischl. These characters love stringless. It's really, really good. I don't think I'm gonna put it in SS just because it's not gonna like break the game having it, but you will love to have it on your account. Stringless, super good. Compound bow. <laughs> Dude, we're gonna get into this. They made a lot of bows that are supposed to be like normal attack for physical, physical. Not Yoimiya, who's pew pewing with Pyro. They, for some reason, thought that physical pew pewing was gonna be a thing. I'll tell you right now, it's not a thing. Midanox Waltz, bruh, get down there, okay? No shot. Stuff like this, I don't know, man. These weapons aren't great, just skip them. Wind Bloom Ode. This is an event weapon, so if you don't have it and they don't implement a system to get one, well, you're not really gonna get one. It, it, it's legitimately just worse stringless. Let's just put it here, it's kind of mid. So Alley Hunter gives you an attack bonus to do damage when you're off field and it has high base attack. This is a pretty good official weapon. That's kind of about it. It doesn't help Yaylon. Yaylon doesn't want attack, she skills with HP for example, for an off-field bow DPS. For Fischl, it is solid. It's very niche. Maybe some bow characters in the future will use it. It's all right. Hold on, I got this. There's too many weapons, bro. Prototype Crescent, I looked in chat. This is the best charge attack weapon for Tainari, for Ganyu, obviously in terms of four-star only, free-to-play friendly, etc., which are what a lot of four-star weapons are. It's kind of hard to play you do need to make sure you hit weak points. That's how it gets like, it's really good bonus. The charge attack weapons aren't that great. There are a lot of better ones, especially the five stars outclass them really hard. But this is a very good weapon for Tainari and Ganyu. Use it if you have it. Hamayumi is like the worst prototype crescent, in my opinion. Like I said, there's a lot of charge attack bows. I think this one's better than King Squire, but it's it's okay, put it there. Mo'un's Moon? Very niche weapon, but cool. Makes burst do a ton of damage based on the energy. It's just like another weapon that we'll get to, Wave Breakers. I would put this in solid. It is very niche. Not that many characters use it, but Kujo loves it. 
and child can use it it's pretty much kujo's best in slot that's about it i probably wouldn't pull for it but if you have it you can make use of it all right this is fading twilight once again it is an event weapon so if you missed it you might not be able to ever get it unless they give us a way to get them it's like a pretty decent damage weapon it's pretty free to play friendly in the way that it's not like broken but it's pretty good it gives good stats like energy recharge and damage percent i'm gonna put it in solid weapons okay i'm putting the aloy bow in bell tier don't ask end of the line i don't know man it just gives some like okay stats there's just so much better weapons in this i don't want to put it in bell tier because it's not like you would never use it it can be a little bit better than some weapons it's not great it's cool though bro is it I don't really like my character holding a big ass fish. It's time for our one-handed swords. I put the elemental mastery little trio right here at the beginning. In my opinion, out of these three swords, the best one is Xyphos' Moonlight. This one is really good. It gives elemental mastery and then it gives like energy recharge bonus to the team based on your elemental mastery. Like that's so good. It's perfect for Kazuha, one of the most broken characters in the game. And like lots of other characters, Kuki, Nilu can run it if you don't have key or anything better. If you have it, congrats to you. But I don't know if you should pull for it because the weapon banner is kind of sus. Iron Sting, look, we all know this is like the free to play option for Kazuha, for Kuki, stuff like that. It's fine. It gets the job done. I wouldn't quite say that it's cracked or anything, but it's chill. What is the sword called, bro? She Shibo Umbrella Sword Genshin. Tokubo uh, Shigure. This weapon was an event weapon. It's pretty good. I think it is genuinely better than Iron Sting. I think they're pretty close, but it is better. Lion's Roar. I think this is the epitome of one of those free to play weapons that a bunch of people are gonna have because it's easy to pick up on a banner on accident. It's pretty good. It's gonna be one of Kaching's best possible options early in the game. You can even use it on certain like melt Kayas. Prototype Rancor. This is physical. One-handed sword physical. Do you know a one-handed physical sword character that is actually good? <laughs> Not really. They need to buff physical, which means this weapon is not great. The only thing I would say is for free to play players, it has a lot of base attack. So you could put it on Bennett, but I still think there's way better options to put on Bennett in the late game when you get some of these other swords. So it's okay. Sacrificial sword. We love Sack sword. I think it's the best weapon on the tier list right now. Sack sword's goaded, dude. So many characters love to use this. Shing Cho, he's got the one skill that's like a 20 second cooldown. You get the skill twice with him. You get all the energy, you're gaming. So it's super good for him. Kazuha, everybody loves to get their like Walmart C1 Kazuha with Sack sword. We love it. Using skills multiple times equals double the energy. Energy is broken. Sack sword great weapon give me the flute this is free to play player has nothing better to use it's not the worst thing ever it's there you're gonna get something better than this weapon eventually so i don't know man maybe don't 90 it festering desire event weapon rip especially it's the oldest event weapon in the game so new players skip this part skip this part it's pretty cool I like it a lot. I used to run it on my Kazuha because I was too lazy to run better weapons and I never changed this build for like a year. Even though it's not that good on him, it's fine. This is a solid weapon for sure. I'd put it like right here. Alley Flash. This thing has a ton of base attack, but the effect is pretty dumb, okay? This is like, put it on Bennett if you want a really big attack buff, but everything else doesn't really help. The thing is like, dude, you have to run a shield with it. Because if you get hit, you lose the effect. I'll put it in like A tier. It's it's okay. It has really high base attack. That's about it though. Amenoma Kageuchi. We all know this weapon is the free to play Ayaka player's best sword. This weapon is really good. You don't really use this on that many characters, but just for how good it is on Ayaka, if you're not some lucky, misplitter, privileged player, it's just a lot of attack and a lot of energy recharge, which good Ayakas know, you need a lot of it. So I'm gonna put it up there. It's not a weapon that that many players, not that many characters use, but uh, it's a good one. So we'll put it up there. Cinnabar Spindle. This is the Albedo weapon that we've all heard of. Albedo players out there, I am sorry. If you cannot get your hands on this weapon, it is Albedo's best in slot weapon, 
hands down, no questions asked, even compared to five stars. It's that simple. I have to put it there. It's a game changer for Albedo. This one, dude, this is just a really mediocre attack weapon. It's got like a mini Fearidescent Venerer wind gale thing. It's pretty not great. <laughs> I'd put it like right here. You're gonna get something better than it, but hey, it's free. Sap Wood Blade. This weapon, very, very, very good. I think this is Bennett's best free to play weapon besides one other that we might get to. I think it goes right here. This weapon has really high base attack. It buffs the team. It's got energy recharge on it. It's it's pretty fire. PlayStation 4 sword, yeah! Okay. <laughs> All right, let's get started into the pole arms. We've got Crescent Pike. Physical damage pole arm. Physical damage kind of a meme, but this weapon is actually kind of broken. It's really good. It's just physical as a meme. Give it time, let it cook. Dragon's Bane. I'm putting this one in Fantastic as well. My camera's covering it, bro. There's too many weapons. All right, maybe not that order. Guys, Dragon's Bane is saucy. It's a really good free to play option for characters like Hu Tao, for Shang Ling, for Toma Burgeon to stack EM. It's good for Raiden Hyperbloom to stack EM. It's not fancy, it's not flashy but it is very good and you will like it on your account. Prototype Star Glitter. Bruh. Yeah. I mean, it gives you kind of useful stats, but not enough of them. And there are a lot of really good pole arms in this game. So it doesn't really cut it. I don't really recommend making it. Dragon Spine Spear. Physical. It does a cryo or something. It's like literally like the belt here. Bro, use Crescent Bike. Racist Spear. The Racist Spear is pretty solid. It's actually good. There are options that are better, but if you're lucky enough to get one and you run like a pretty good national team or whatever, it's not too bad. I'd honestly put it right here. Guys, it's a joke. It only, <laughs> it gets a power up if you use it with only Leeway characters. <laughs> So it genuinely is like, monster? Uh, Ina Zoomins? <coughs> Ugh. Su Don't even get me started on the Sumerian characters, okay? Katane Spear. This one gives you a lot of elemental mastery and some energy recharge. This is genuinely the best in slot for Burgeon Toma. And Burgeon Toma is super freaking good. I'm gonna go right here. Now, this is pretty much only for Toma, you can use it on some other characters. It's just not that good. Use it if you like Virgin Toma, go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the catch. The free to play weapon that you have all heard is so good. Is it really that good? Yeah, it is, dude. Go farm the catch. I'm sorry that they made it be the most tedious, annoying way to get it, but dude, it's so good. Energy recharge, lit. Elemental burst damage, crit rate, and damage increase. This is legit, like almost best in slot Shang Ling. There's like a few five-star weapons that are better. Raiden Shogun, it gives you all stats you want on her. It works on like almost every damage dealing um, polearm character. It's really that good. Do yourself a favor, go get it. Wave Breakers Finn. I love this weapon as I am a Rosaria Simp. It's really close to being her best in slot if you have an R5 for reverse melt teams. There's not that many other characters who use it really well. Raiden Shogun actually uses it really well if you don't have any of the better weapons for her. I don't think it's fair to put it super high in the tier list. I'd probably put it like right under Dragon's Bane, okay? It's covered by the camera. It's going right after Dragon's Bane. I'll show you guys the full tier list at the end. Missive Wind Spear, something like that. On paper, the stats and stuff are pretty good, but once again, it's not enough to actually be useful. So I, I don't know, man. I'm gonna put this like right around here, dude. You're chilling. Oh, this is an event weapon, so don't cry. Uh, it sucks. All right, Moon 
Piercer. I'm gonna keep this short. It's just like the one I just said, where like, it's kind of useful. It looks like it's useful, but it just doesn't do enough to stand up to some of these other pretty broken pull arms. All right, chat agrees with me. I was feeling top of mid. I'm gonna keep it there. Dude, we're already to the Claymores. The weapon that changed names. It used to be called Prototype. I don't remember, bro. Aminus. Yes. Anywho, Prototype Archaic. This is like, just one of those weapons if you don't have something better i guess craft it because it's not that big of a you know commitment to craft it i'd put it like right here you'll get something better one day champ rain slasher dude rain slasher i think is a little bit slept on it's a great stat stick for some of the just em building claymore characters like sayu beto could even run this i respect this weapon and what it does and how it helps some certain characters so shout out to rain slasher sack great sword now i spoke very highly about sack sword and sack bow so like sack great sword by association is also really good there's just like not as many characters that utilize it i think there can be some claymore characters in the future that could really use this weapon but right now i think the best user of sack great sword is dory and i think we all know how good dory is i will out of respect for the future out of respect for energy recharge, I pray to the gods of energy every night before I go to bed that I'm not at 79 out of 80 energy in the abyss. So out of respect, bottom of song. It's time for the bell. Where do we put the bell on this deal, this guys? Dia came out. Dia pretty good. Dory? Someone could even argue it's a game changer because when you pull it, you want to uninstall the game. Yeah, okay, bro, let's move on. This weapon sucks balls. White Blind, this is the defense scaling free to play craftable weapon. So for Noel and Ito, it is good. I'm looking at every weapon in solid and I think White Blind is worse. Yeah, I'm gonna put it here. Trust me, we'll get to it. It's okay, there's better. Snow Tombed Star silver <laughs> i don't know this thing sucks bro it's physical and it's blue and it's pretty so you're like eula pog dude she's finally about to get her rerun oh i'm gonna pop off it dude this weapon sucks like it, it legit there's so many better claymores you'd rather run on eula than this i'm sorry racist claymore <laughs> Racist Claymore doesn't roll off the tongue as good as a racist spear. <laughs> this weapon, it gives good stats. It's only with Leewa characters. There's just not that many Claymore characters that can utilize this weapon as of now, but it is pretty good stats. I don't exactly think you should be like pulling on limited banners to try and get this weapon. There are much better weapons you can get. I'm gonna put it right here. I think that's relatively fair. No shot, I know the name of this one. I'm sorry. Shiba, Shiba she inazuma craftables katsura gikiri nagamasa my bad sorry guys i couldn't remember that one this weapon is generally pretty good on sayu for her to roll around and do some dps and upper damage and stuff but besides that there's not very many claymore characters that like to lose their ability to burst and all that kind of stuff when you want. I mean, bro, it's gotta be mid to niche. We're doing back-to-back -back event weapons here. Mailed Flower is an elemental mastery based Claymore. It is genuinely best in slot for Virgin Dia. Now, I love Dia. That team is very fun. Is Virgin Dia better than Toma? No shot. But hey, let me cope. It's also good on Sayu. It's just a pretty good weapon. I'll put it above right, Tasher. It's solid. You just can't get it anymore, sorry. Okay, when I said better free-to-play weapons for Eula, the luxurious Sea Lord makes a splash on the meta. <laughs> don't leave. I'm gonna be honest, I just don't like that I, my character's swinging around a giant fish. So like, I kind of just don't want to use it, but it's... It's not bad. It does a lot of damage, gives a lot of useful stats, just a ton of attack. And uh, yeah, dude, shout outs to Fist Lord. Shout outs to Eula players that can swing around a giant fish because it's a whole lot better than the ice one at the bottom. We've got Akuomaru, which is once again, one of those weapons that is based off of the whole team's max energy, depending on how high that number is, it'll boost your burst damages damage. This weapon is very good on Eula and it is extremely good on Beto 
if you can get it, R5. It sucks that I have to say that, because at R1, it's pretty good. At R5, dude, this thing goes hard. And it looks really badass. This goes in fantastic weapons. It's a little bit niche, but it is absolutely fantastic. I think this weapon has crazy potential to just be really, really good on more characters in the future as well. So good weapon. We've got Forest Regalia. Don't let this trick you that it has good stats-ish on paper and buffs the team. Nah, just use something else, okay? Makaira Aquamarine. This sword sounds like a VTuber's name. It's really good on Sayu. It's totally usable on characters like Beto, but that's kind of about it. Virgin Zinyan. Yeah. <laughs> it's got good stats. It's got a good future ahead of itself. I think I'm just gonna place it right here with the Elemental Mastery Claymores that, you know, try their best. So shout outs to them. Homies, we made it to the Catalyst. One sec. Eye of Perception to kick off the Catalyst. And I'm gonna kick it off into the goddamn D tier. Stop appearing in my polls. Okay, Mappa Mare. It's okay. It gives Elemental Mastery and then like a damage boost but like not that many catalysts really want that they want the elemental mastery if they're animo then the elemental damage doesn't help and then if you want the elemental damage there's just better options it's not the most dog water weapon i've ever seen i'll put it in the mid niche just chilling drake's in the chat for prototype amber i think this weapon is absolutely based it gives hp so it's fantastic on all the healers shielders etc it gives energy recharge energy is broken and it heals the team whenever you burst it may just be a little bit, but at R5, it adds up, dude. This weapon is really good for Kokomi, extra heals. And if you guys didn't see my four stars only, Abyss Clear, the secret sauce that made it possible was Prototype Amber, Yanfei. You can run this on any catalyst in the game. L legit, if you like are running Sucrose on a team and you really need the healing, it's like Corrosion Floor or something, I don't know. You can run this and it will work. I really do think this is a high tier weapon. This weapon is really good. Let's go. Sacrificial Fragments and Wid Sith. I think I'm slapping them both in Game Changers and let's talk about it. Sac Frags first, double skills, double energy, and it gives a ton of elemental mastery. Sucrose is genuinely one of the strongest characters in the game. Animo supports are broken. Sucrose can be better than Kazuha in certain teams, okay? And what does Sucrose want to hold 99% of the time? It's Sack Frags. And I just think the more characters that come out are going to want to use this weapon. Someone said EM Kokomi. Of course, if you run Bloom Kokomi with Nilu, one of my favorite teams, she pops off, does so much damage with Sack Frags. This weapon is godlike. It is genuinely a game changer. Now, with Sith, this weapon is legit one of the best dps weapons in the whole game there's a little bit of rng based on what buff you get when you switch in which you can actually tell by the little music note that appears above your head if you're a super nerd i don't got time to look at that i just pray it's a good one and most of the time it is a good one it gives crit damage broken solid base attack and then just elemental mastery elemental damage whatever it's just boom damage baby you want to clap stuff you want Wood Sith. I hope you guys all get an R5 Wood Sith in your future. This weapon outclasses a lot of five-star weapons, genuinely. What is this thing even called, bro? Snow Piercer? Frost Bearer. <laughs> we sound like such nerds, bro. I know that we play Genshin and stuff, so we're already nerds. Look, Hoyaverse tried with the icicle dropping little weapon thing. I don't want it to be alone. And it's got two of his little friends right here. So he's gonna go snuggle up with them. It's cold in Dragon Spine, okay? Wine and song. I wish this weapon was good because I just like the positivity of, of drinking some wine and singing some songs with the lads at the tavern. But yeah, this thing's dog. It gives energy recharge, which is cool. But then it's like a normal attack stamina, dude. I don't know who uses this. Like it has a cool effect. I'm just gonna put it in the bottom of that and move on. Dodoko Tails, another event weapon made for Klee. It's good about giving attack, charge attack damage, boom. It's good on Klee. But like we just mentioned with Widsith, right up here, Widsith is legitimately better for Klee. This is pretty okay on Wanderer. I'm gonna put it at like solid 
weapons because it's not bad. It's just outclassed. Hawkushin Ring. This is a cool-ish weapon with the electro reaction and whatever. There's just not a character that uses it like super well. It's really niche. I think it's cool. I think it has potential in the future, but right now it's just chilling. Make something else. Oath Sworn Eye. I remember. They make this Enconomia looking weapon with like a shell. And I'm supposed to be like, bro, this is about to be lit on Kokomi. Spoilers, it's not. The only character who might use this is Yai Miko. So honestly, this is like a free to play Yai Miko weapon. It's an event weapon. So if you don't have it, GG, you're probably gonna get something better than it eventually. So I don't know, man. I can't really in good faith say it's a great weapon. It's okay. All right, homies, we've got Wandering Evenstar up next. Limited banner weapon, kind of hard to get. Really good on Nahida because Nahida likes Elemental Mastery and likes attack. There's some characters that just want one or the other. Not that many characters like both. There's characters like Lisa and Yai Miko and stuff like that, but it's really just not that powerful for them. I think it goes right about here. It's a solid weapon, not too bad. There's so many weapons, it's just too hard to Google them all. Whatever, I don't remember the name. It's like Fruit of Fulfillment. They were going for something here. They were getting ambitious. It like gives you Elemental Mastery, but takes away your attack. It's like, bro, I want that attack. You guys are saying Lisa and Ahita, they like the attack. So how about we just pick something that gives us Elemental Mastery and doesn't take away our attack. I'm not a huge fan of this weapon. Sure, it looks pretty and all. I think it goes into niche. I can't put it in solid. That would just be disrespectful. Ladies and gentlemen, we're getting into some bangers down here. I saved some good good for us near the end. Battle Pass Weapons. These weapons, you have to buy them. They cost $10 for a month of Battle Pass. So it sucks that they're not free to play, but for the low spenders, for the Battle Pass Welkin Moon players, these weapons um, are all pretty darn good. Spoiler alert. Let's start with Viridescent Hunt. This weapon, it's not used on that many characters. I think the numero uno person who likes to use this one is Child. And it's just a great stat stick. It really is solid. You could use this on like a Tainari too as a stat stick. Oh, for the aesthetics, dude, that's gonna look good on it. Whatever. I asked the chat, we had a little bit of a debate. I think um, bottom of fantastic weapons, honestly good. I'll put it above like Crescent Pike. I tried to make some wordplay and failed for like 30 seconds. So chat, don't narc on me. Sit down because, stand up because you're just gonna wanna don't sit down. Serpent Spine, broken. It's going absolutely into Game Changer. It's arguably the best Claymore in the entire game. And I'm not kidding. It gives crit rate, it's got good base attack, and it is just percent damage increase. Sometimes you get physical damage. Sometimes you get like pyro damage, right? This is just damage percent increase. It's insane. You use this on every single Claymore character. We're talking Edo and Noel. That's why I put White Blind so low. Yes, White Blind is free, but dude, Battle Pass weapon, it's it's 10 bucks, so it's not exactly free, but this is a gotcha game. It's kind of cheap to get a weapon. This broken. So Black Sword is pretty good. I like to use this sometimes on like Xing Cho when I'm running a bunch of Hydro just to up my damage or I can run this on Ayaka if I've got really high crit damage stuff and not enough crit rate. It's just a great stat stick. It's pretty darn inoffensively good. It's just not like broken. So I'm gonna put it in solid. Don't worry about the placements too much on this tier list, but Black Sword's really good. Solar Pearl, I personally think Solar Pearl and Death Mask, I didn't do this on purpose, but I think they're the two like weakest battle pass weapons they're not bad solar pearl i'm gonna put solar pearl in solid it's a good stat stick catalyst uh there's just better options and then deathmatch deathmatch's bonus is like a little hard to get and then it gives defense or whatever like who really cares it does give good stats though and has high base attack i'm just privileged and i do have weapons that are better than deathmatch but i think if people can get their hands on one it's pretty darn good it's like around here royal weapons give me a second guys Hold, hold. These cost star glitter. You want to buy characters with those. You want to buy poles with those. I'm gonna buy these things that up my crit rate until I crit and then it goes away. These are bad, bro. Don't pull them. Don't let them trick you. No. Black Cliff weapons. Once again, these are just stat sticks that are pretty decent, but they cost star glitter, so it's a little tough to really 
recommend them that much. They're all relatively solid. It's just hard to justify spending glitter on them. I think the best one is the sword because Ayaka really likes it. So I will put it here. The Claymore is pretty decent on like Deluke and stuff like that. If you don't have something better, I'll put it like here or something. Black Cliff, Polearm, not bad for like characters like Hu Tao. They enjoy the stats. The effect, you just can't really get the effect. So it's just like a stat stick. It's just kind of mid. I'll put it like here. The bow, nah. There's just better bows. There's not that many characters that want something like this. They can't get something better, like down here. And then, dude, I've never seen anybody use this. I don't I don't know who uses this. Get with it. All right, guys, we've reached the end of our tier list to the Favonius weapons. We gotta do something a little bit different here. <sighs> Let me cook. <laughs> Legit, if you didn't understand that energy is broken, I hope you do now. Energy helps the character holding the weapon themselves, right? This gives energy to the whole team. Every team member is going to benefit when one team member has fab. So many teams' problems can get completely patched by throwing fab on the character, okay? You're running national team, but your Shanglings having a little bit of trouble getting their burst back up. Bennett, give him the fab sword. Who cares if it's not the biggest attack buff you could possibly get? It gives you so many other guys' darn benefits. Fav Sword, broken. Fav Bow, Kale, Fischl, everybody, broken. Fav Lance, dude. Sean Lin can run it if she can't get the energy. Rosaria, Yun Jin, it's her best in slot. It's Shen He's best in slot, XD. They're absolute game changers. Broken, broken, broken weapons. Now that I've looked at the tier list, and I understand what is game changers and not. I really like Sack Sword. I really like Sack Bow. I really like Stringless. I think that those three actually deserve to be game changers. They're not flashy, but they're just that strong. Okay, hiding the camera. Slow scroll of the full tier list from Triple S Fav all the way down to the bell, baby. That is your boy's tier list. Homies, as per usual, I really hope that this video helped you out. I know tier lists can be very divisive. I know you guys are not gonna agree with everything I say. Of course, I'm one guy, I am fallible, okay? I can make mistakes, I can be wrong about something, but I have been playing Genshin for a really long time. Much love, thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, and also, come hang out on Twitch. The Eeks Geeks here, we love them, they're so nice. You should come join us. Drop your Twitch Prime, it's free. Big shout outs to the patrons, Zik, Poison Tongue Boy, Sayu, Gophers, Caldo, everyone else on Patreon for helping us create full-time content. It really does make a big difference. Thank you guys again for all the support lately on the channel. It's quite overwhelming. You guys rock. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye everybody.